Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is a great day. It's a great day because you are going to start your glow up journey. And not only are you gonna start your glow up journey, you're gonna start a 30 day challenge to get you on the path of glowing up. And we're also gonna talk about how to permanently keep your glow up. So listen, the reason why we're talking about glow ups right now, and in fact, I created a 30 day glow up challenge for you guys and myself is because it is February, at least when you are watching this, and I'm only now just feeling like I'm coming out of the freaking dumps, okay? I had a flop era, I had a depressed era, I was slacking on so many goals, and quite frankly, spring is around the corner, okay? Like, when I think about February, I think basically like March, we're in March, which means we are going to naturally want to be feeling good, looking good, just being more productive in our lives, so we essentially need to start now. And I am so sick and tired of not living up to my full potential and not staying on a routine and not being consistent. So I came up with five main areas of focus that I believe are very important when it comes to starting a glow up journey and these five areas are going to be the areas that we are gonna focus on and hit every single day for the next 30 days now I'm gonna be starting this challenge on February 12th you're gonna start the challenge whenever it is that you have the time and you're ready to go if you see this video today and you want to start tomorrow you can start tomorrow it doesn't matter even if you watch this video in March April May or you just want to restart this challenge again feel free I'm gonna have a template for you which is gonna be linked down below I'm gonna have a habit tracker for you which is gonna be linked down below I'm gonna pop up everything and I'm gonna give you guys my examples on what I'm personally doing to make this challenge my own and I'm gonna give you examples so you can make it your own as well so when I realized I really wanted to get out of my flop era and just like pick myself back up and challenge myself and get on a routine I was obviously thinking about what can I do now a lot of people are currently doing the 75 hard challenge which bless your soul if you're doing the 75 hard challenge all the power to you if you want to do that that's great I I personally don't want to do the 75 hard challenge because I think that it's genuinely just not realistic for me but I wanted to create a challenge that was going to hit the most important areas of our lives that will allow us to feel great look great and obviously be very productive in our lives so for the next 30 days you are going to have one to three goals and I'm gonna explain what I mean by making it your own in a wellness menu you're gonna have one to three goals in each area of focus and you are going to hit all five areas of focus every single day so let's talk about sleep sleep is so important for us to have energy to be able to hit workouts to be able to be more productive in life to be able to just have a better mood and it is time that we get on a routine so you are going to think about one to three things that you are going to focus on when it comes to your sleep for the next 30 days so maybe for your sleep goal for the next 30 days is going to be setting your alarm 30 minutes earlier than you normally do so that you can get you know a little bit more done in your day or maybe you're having a set bedtime at 9 p.m. and you're making sure that you're off your phone every single day for 30 days maybe you are thinking about the thing that affects your sleep the most and you are replacing that habit with something better so let's say you drink on the weekends maybe you're drinking mocktails so that you can actually get into bed early and that it's not ruining your sleep or maybe if you're somebody who's chronically on your phone you're replacing your phone habit one hour before bed with a book whatever it is that is causing you not to sleep you are going to add that in as your goal so let's bring it back to the fact that I want this challenge to be unique to you, okay? If I set the rules for you to follow for the next 30 or 75 days, it's just not going to be realistic. So that is why I want you to create a wellness menu, like I said, of one to three things that are unique to you that you know you'll be able to hit in every single area. So I'm going to give you a few examples of what's under my wellness menu for sleep. So the first thing is Monday to Friday, I'm going to have a sleep wake schedule of getting into bed at 9 p.m., no phone, reading my book. And I already know that I'll fall asleep within like 30 minutes because I just know myself. And I'm waking up at 6 a.m. Monday to Friday. I wanna have that as a goal of mine. And the reason why I'm only picking Monday to Friday is because the truth is there are gonna be times where I'm gonna be going out with my friends or I'm gonna be up a little bit later on the weekend, which is totally fine. But then I'm gonna have a few uh, wellness rules in place for those days as well so I can still be flexible but I'm still hitting my sleep goal every single day for 30 days so another goal for my sleep is to have no phone right in the morning I don't care if I on the weekend didn't go to sleep at 9 p.m. and maybe I went to sleep at 10 p.m. whatever it was no phone 30 days in the morning I really don't need to do that and on the weekends if I'm not able to get to bed at 9 p.m. I am setting my alarm to at least make sure that I am still getting eight hours 
hours of sleep. Now I probably will still wake up early if I go out or if I do something, but I do want to make sure that I'm getting enough sleep and that I'm moving my body in the morning instead of my phone. So those are some of the things that I'm going to be focusing on for my sleep. When you guys get this template, you're able to make your own copy and you can take out my stuff and you can add a few things. And listen, maybe you're just going to stick to one thing because you know that you can, which is again, maybe it's just a 30 minutes in the morning or you're going to sleep at 9 p.m. every single night for 30 days because that's what you can do. You don't have to make it crazy. You don't also want to give yourself so many options where every single day is all over the place. But again, like we have to be realistic with challenges in my personal opinion and there's just going to be some days that are not going to be perfect and that's totally fine how can we still find ways to work on our sleep every single day which should be the goal right like every single day regardless of the 30 days we should be moving our bodies right we should be nourishing ourselves right so what can we create for our own selves to be able to glow up consistently? All right, the next thing, of course, is movement. I think this, along with nourishment, is really important that we have a few options because let's bring it back to 75 Hard Challenge again. The challenge tells you to do two workouts a day and one needs to be outside. I think that that's really hard to hit and I honestly think a lot of people burn themselves out by doing that again if you're doing that amazing I love you and you can totally challenge yourself but we're just like I'm not like ready to like burn myself out type of girly that's just not how I move and I just think realistically for myself I'm not going to be able to get into my actual physical like weightlifting gym every single day because I don't weightlift every single day. I'm sore sometimes and I personally don't crave being in the gym every single day and I like to do other types of movement. So what I have for my wellness menu is three leg days a week because that's something that I focus on when it comes to my training and I know that I can do that if I'm being consistent and like, you know, like setting this challenge for myself. I'm gonna add one upper body slash core workout as well in the gym. That's something that's gonna be a push for me because I've kind of been slacking on that, which again, just reminding myself and you guys, like I am pushing myself. These are not things that I'm already just like doing all the time. Like this is gonna be a push. Another thing that I'm gonna do is one reformer Pilates class a week because that is what I do. I have a membership and this one I have to focus on in the sense of actually scheduling my classes because sometimes what will happen is I don't schedule my classes in time and within a month frame I basically like will skip um, a workout in a week because I didn't like you know do it and then the next week I'm doing two classes so I want to make sure that I'm scheduling out all of my classes which is only four classes really but I'm making sure that I'm doing that and the last thing that I have is a hot girl walk daily because I know I have the time and I actually do really enjoy hot girl walks and I can get one done regardless so maybe your movement goal is just one hot girl walk a day and everything else that you do will be extra and it's not really a part of the challenge but of course that will be a benefit but regardless of what it is that you're doing you are focusing on movement every single day okay so let's say you do three days in the gym then the other days of the week you're going on a hot girl walk or you're doing like a five minute ab circuit or you're doing a workout at home or you're doing pilates or you're doing yoga at home whatever it is find a schedule that works for you and cycle through that. And honestly, this is how I stay consistent and stay fit and stay healthy, even outside of this challenge, is I have options for myself because there's just days that you're either not motivated or you're on your period or you're really sore and you didn't think that you're gonna be so sore. And instead of completely being like, oh, I'm just not gonna do my workout because I'm on my period or like, I'm really sore. No, 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 we still have other options. What are the other options? A hawk or walk. Maybe you're doing an upper body day instead of doing a leg day. Like, give yourself options. Because because why when you want to actually glow up into the best version of yourself if you want the nice body you want the nice hair you want the nice x y and z you need to be consistent over a long period of time okay you don't have to do the exact same thing all the time but you want to move your body consistently and that is what's going to get you the results and that is how I continue to stay fit and healthy without doing a lot the next area of focus will be nourishment I called it nourishment because I don't really like the idea of saying a diet because like uh, whatever if you want to stick to some sort of diet for 30 days you can oh for the 75 hard it was like sticking to one sort of diet as well um which i guess is kind of like lots of flexibility because you can pick which one but over here you guys know i had a really unhealthy relationship with food and i personally don't like to stick to any sort of like counting calories or doing any sort of strict dieting but i will say that i am an intentional eater after healing the relationship that i've had with my food i for sure am aware of the things that i eat and and like i want to be intentional because i want to feel nourished i want to feel energized i want to replenish the nutrients that i'm losing when i'm going to the gym i want to support my muscle gain like i want to do all the 
those things and I think that's totally fine and I think that we do know when it kind of gets unhealthy but anyways for nourishment I have breakfast before coffee every single day for 30 days that's something that I've been trying to do as much as possible but I haven't been consistent with it so that's one thing that I want to do and maybe for you for nourishment that is all you're doing Let's say that's what you wanted to do. That's all you're doing and that's that. You're not doing anything else. You don't need to overwhelm yourself because that is more of a habit for me. I'm adding a few more things into my nourishment wellness menu. The next thing for me is eating high protein meals at home Monday to Friday. So I spend a lot of time at home. I work for myself, so I'm like always home. And because protein is the main focus that I like to focus on, due to the fact that i do weight train that is what i want to focus on at least during the week and on the weekends it's not about not eating high protein but even if i'm going out let's say i am going to choose meals that have a protein count in it so instead of getting let's say a truffle pasta that's really yummy it's not about deeming truffle pasta as bad but it's like how can i add some protein into this pasta and if i can't do that then what meal and there's a lot of meals that i could get that are delicious that just has protein in it so maybe it's a chicken burger maybe it's a beef burger maybe it's a salad with chicken on top of it maybe it is pasta but making sure there's meatballs in it like whatever it is let me just focus on protein the last thing that i want to be focusing on is meal prepping at least once a week so that i can really hit my protein intake for the Monday to Friday. So again, another example could be for you, maybe you just wanna stop eating out for 30 days and you wanna make all your meals at home and that could just be that. Or you wanna stop ordering food on Uber Eats for the month. Like it doesn't have to be crazy. You need to understand where you're at in your diet slash like nourishment um, lifestyle right now and act accordingly. Okay, the next thing that I think is going to be a push for all of us, okay? A very big push for all of us, but I really want us to do this and I think that we can and I think that we're smart enough and we are, we're zoned in enough we can do this and that is one hour of self-development every single day now again i really think it's important that we have some sort of wellness menu for this because being somebody for me personally i'm a cyclical girly my moods change all the time i also like sometimes i struggle with staying focused on tasks and focused on um like ideas like i, I jumped from idea to idea i'll get really excited about learning about this one topic and then i want to like dive into this like I, I i can get all over the place so i've created my wellness menu to kind of like support me so that i can still focus on self-development every single day so i have three things for myself one is to have two of my self-development books that i will have on the go one i'm reading right now is healing trauma by peter levine and also atomic habits which i'm going to get the atomic habits just on my kindle um i've never actually read that book and a lot of people think that i read that book because when i talk about habits sometimes and identity they're like oh my god have you read that book but i actually haven't read that book but the reason why i'm picking two self-development books is because healing trauma that book and I'm, i've already started reading it like I, i'm like almost like done it um my mindset is not really always like really wanting to dive into healing trauma that night so i'm just being realistic not every single night for 30 days i'm gonna be want to be talk about freaking trauma right so like maybe i want to read atomic habits because it's more motivating it's like habits and lifestyle and and routines and things like that that are a little bit more lighthearted. And then I have podcast episodes, which I have a lot of them, which by the way, I have a podcast. If you guys didn't know, I actually did talk about this challenge on the podcast as well, but I have a podcast if you wanna to listen to it, the Globe Secrets podcast it is on YouTube, but also Spotify, Apple, be linked down below. But I wanna have podcasts be a part of my one hour self-development because there's just going to be days we have to think about the fact that we have careers, right? You guys have relationships, friendships, children, careers. We don't have all the freaking time sometimes in the world to get your, your one hour of reading in, right? Or your one hour of studying on a course or something. So on the days that I have a very busy day, I can have it sack and I can go on my hot girl walk and I can listen to a podcast for an hour and that's gonna be my self-development for the day. So that way, if I just am so exhausted at night and I can't read for an hour, or I'm just like not in the mood, I've done my one hour of self-development. That's why I think it's so good to have a lot of different things on your wellness menu. And the last thing that I have is to study for my course minimum three times a week because I am in a course right now at the School of Embodied Arts and I have a lot of work to do for that. So again, like on the days that I'm studying for my course because I literally need to, I probably will do even more than an hour, but after doing that, like for me to get into bed also and then tell myself I have to freaking read an hour, like, 
I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm just being realistic. That's just not gonna be a thing. But what I wanna do is hit that self-development goal every single day. So think about the things that you wanna do. Maybe it's just like studying an extra thing that you've like, haven't really put a lot of time and attention into, whether that's a new skill, even a hobby, but hobbies can be thrown into something else that we're gonna talk about. Or maybe you are somebody who can just like focus on something for 30 days and it is going to be just one book. Maybe it's my book, The Ultimate Glow Up Guide. I have a new book that just came out. It is all about self-sabotage and how to get out of your own way when it comes to glow up journey, which we're gonna talk about later. Maybe you wanna grab this book, whatever it is. But I also think thinking about habit stacking when it comes to self-development can be very key if you are a very busy girly. Like I remember when I was serving, I had a nine to five and I was building my social media, like my YouTube channel. I got so much self-development in all the time because I have it stacked. So when I would drive to work, I would always be listening to podcasts or my audio books. When I was coming home from work, audiobooks, podcasts. When I would go to the gym, I would always be listening to something in my ear. When I'd be going to sleep, obviously I'd be reading my books. When you're going on a hawk or walk, you can listen to a podcast there. Don't be too overwhelmed with this because I think you could actually find a lot more pockets of time to do these things. Now, the last thing that we're gonna be focusing on for daily, now we have one other section that we're gonna talk about, but this is for daily, is self care. I think when we're talking about a glow up, we can't, we can't ignore the physical, right? So maybe you have hair goals, you have skin goals, maybe you have teeth goals, whatever goals that you have physically, come up with a menu in which every single day for the next 30 days, you're gonna be focusing on something and it doesn't need to be this hour long, everything shower routine. It can be simply, you know, a few days out of the week you're doing gua sha or maybe you're doing oil pulling or you're getting really good at flossing your teeth. If you don't floss your teeth every single night, but you need to do that. So maybe that's gonna be your self care habit and that's all you're gonna do. But you know, thinking about the things that you really wanna focus on. For me, I have a scalp massage at least three times a week, which doesn't take long. It takes like five minutes. Um, when my, when my braids are out actually if you haven't seen I have like really big curly natural hair and I want it to grow as much as it wants really so what I'm gonna be doing is taking my little scalp massager that I have and putting some oil and putting that on my scalp and just really stimulating that hair growth I'm also gonna be doing my dr. Dennis um, chemical peels which I do that pretty frequently but again I just want to stay on top of that three times a week which don't take long it takes about five freaking minutes I'm also going to be focusing on doing one midweek hair reset now I usually do one everything shower routine like once a week um, where I do like a deep conditioner like exfoliating everything under a heat cap everything for my natural hair but I really want to make sure that my hair is as nourished as possible and being somebody who my hair will dry out if I do not have the right products in I have to do a mid-week hair reset. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna be doing. And then I have an everything shower routine once a week as well. So thinking about the things that you wanna focus on, maybe it has to do with your skin or it has to do with your your eyebrows or you know your nails or your freaking hair. Or maybe you're simply just getting back on a skincare routine in your mornings and nights because maybe you've been skipping that. Like maybe you don't really do that or you're adding in like a retinol or you know, you're, you're gonna wear sunscreen every single day for the next 30 days. Again, it doesn't have to be crazy. Just make it your own and then the once a week extras this is something that I know I have the capacity for and want to do and I think it's really helpful for me so feel free to just skip this if you just don't have the time like genuinely but coming up with something that you can do at least once a week which basically just means four times out of the month out of this challenge so for me I'm gonna do one solo date night and I'm saying one solo date night because realistically I am at home majority of the time especially like in winter time but I at least, even like if I have an event to go to if I'm seeing my friends on the weekend, I don't usually go out both nights. So I have one night that I stay in, but I want that night to be different than the nights that I usually stay in because usually Monday to Friday I'm staying in. Like unless I'm going on an event, like I'm usually staying in. But staying in during the week for me looks basically like I'm working until it gets dark out and then maybe I'm doing some editing and I'm cleaning up my place, I'm having dinner, I'm like getting back to emails, I'm talking to friends. I'm not really like having like a night, right? I'm eating my meal prepped food, like it's nothing too crazy. But my solo date night, is, it's more fun. I'm, I'm making a sleepy girl mocktail or I'm making a wellness mocktail. I'm listening to music, like I'm not worrying about work unless I'm filming, but like filming is just like a fun thing to do. I, I'm like, I'm not editing. I'm watching my reality TV shows. I'm talking to friends, whatever it is that I want to do. I'm painting. I've been painting candles, these, these little candles, um, puzzles, whatever. So I just want to make that night also making a meal that's not meal prepped. Like I'll usually make pasta of some sort. I'll go to farm boy and just, 
I don't know, make something cute, um, which I don't tend to do. So I wanna do that at least one night a week. Another night, I want to do a either girls night in or out. And this doesn't have to be a night really. It could just be like meeting with a friend once a week, like just for coffee. I just need social interaction because I live by myself and I don't have a lot of interaction. So only on my phone really. So that's something that I want to make sure that I'm doing. And then one deep clean a week because I have an apartment, basically two bedrooms and I need to keep up with my space and my space really does affect my mental state. So like I said, I'm going to be starting this challenge on February 12th on Monday. I'm also going to be filming a lot of TikTok. So if you have TikTok, you can follow me on TikTok, The Glow Up Secrets. I'll have it down below or you can just type in my name. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I'm gonna be doing, whether it's a vlog of me hitting all five things, or I'm gonna give you some tips when it comes to sleep, showing you how to make my sleepy girl mocktail because that helps when it comes to sleep, um, workouts, nourishment, any of the lazy girl high protein meals that I like to make because I do not like spending a lot of time cooking, genuinely. Um, so definitely follow me on there. I'll also be updating you guys every day on my stories on Instagram. Instagram, so follow me on Instagram if you have it. And also, like I said, you'll be getting a habit tracker. This is also on Notion, so hopefully you have Notion or you can just sign up. Um, I just made a quick habit tracker where for four weeks, you're just gonna hit off if you've done everything. But I'm so excited to start this challenge because I just think that this is something we need right now to really kickstart this new season of life that we're gonna be coming into because realistically, like spring is gonna be here like that. When we're done this challenge, if you're starting it around the time I am, Spring is going to be here, which is wild to me. And I love the idea of compounding on habits and building on things. And realistically, when this 30 day glow up challenge is done, we're gonna feel so much more rested. We're gonna be consistent at the gym or whatever we're doing for movement. We're gonna be in the routine of taking care of ourselves that we're gonna be able to add more things on our glow up. So let's talk about keeping your glow up permanent and I'm using quotations because I think you guys know where I'm probably going with this. So let's just bring it back to the fact that I was on a pursuit of glowing up at the age of 16, realistically. I have been trying to glow up in many aspects of my life. And quite frankly, I always felt like I was falling short. I could never stay consistent with things. I could never stick to challenges. I always felt like I was self-sabotaging. I just never felt like I was glowing up and I would always feel really crappy about myself when I would find myself getting in my own way. But I no longer get into these negative cycles, these spirals, this self-sabotage. Even when I do, let's say, quote quote, not stick to something perfectly. I have a completely different mindset of the way that I look at it versus how I used to, which allows me to continue to move forward in the pursuit of glowing up. And that is how I've gotten everything in my life. The way that I actually was able to get the body, get the health, get the money, get the career, get the relationships, get everything in my life was not from the place that I thought that I was getting it at when I first started. So here are three things that I wanna talk about when it comes to if you find that you are struggling with having a glow up or even keeping it permanent. One is that there is always a reason why you are self-sabotaging. There's an, always a reason why you are falling off a healthy habit. There's always a reason why you keep getting into a rut or keep getting into a cycle. And the thing is, is when I was younger, I knew that I was getting into cycles and like, you know, like I would binge eat and then I would just like start on Monday or I would like just, you know, eat outside of my, my diet or, you know, I would just like wake up and like at night I would tell myself that I'd do something and wake up early in the morning and then I just wouldn't. Like I knew that I was doing those things, but I did not understand why I was doing those things. And you need to understand the root of your self-sabotage if you want to stop self-sabotaging. And what I would do is just see that I would tell myself one thing, but then do another, or like eat unhealthy food when I know that I shouldn't have. And, but like, I would just try again the next day and try the same thing over and over. Like I wouldn't actually sit here and be like, hmm, why did I do that? I would get mad at myself for doing that thing until I understood why I was self-sabotaging and how to change my mindset regarding self-sabotage. Now, I write a lot about this in my book, The Ultimate Glow Up Guide, and how we have many parts of us, okay? 
but we definitely have two parts of us that tend to come online and you know quote unquote in our minds get in our way when we're trying to glow up and for me i'm just going to give you my personal example which i talked about this in the book i basically had two conflicting parts within me that really made it hard for me to ever get out of my own way and create healthy habits and just like live a healthy life one was that i had an emotional side of me that was self-soothing due to childhood trauma due to not being able to process my emotions or release my emotions not being able to handle my emotions I was in fight or flight I was very um, overwhelmed in life I had to grow up at a very young age my dad passed away even when I had a relationship with him it was very it wasn't healthy um, he was very very strict on me I, I was very suppressed and then I went through a life where my mom was addicted and I had to grow up really really quickly so I was living in a lot of turmoil a lot of stress and any Anytime that um, a financial issue came up, anytime that I needed to like create a new routine or just change something in my life, I was a very emotionally overwhelmed and I didn't do well with that. And so what I would do is I would run to candy. I did that when I was a young child and I never knew why I was so obsessed with candy. A lot of the times it was because I was self-soothing myself in moments where I was actually really afraid. I just didn't know that. And I talk about this in my book. But even as I grew up, when I wanted to go on certain diets, there'd be still pockets of my life where I still didn't know how to like emotionally regulate. I was overwhelmed. I had to, con I was in this control fight or flight trauma response and I would go to eating candy or e overeating food to try and suppress myself, try and soothe myself, try and make myself feel okay. And unfortunately I learned to hate on myself for doing that. I would get pissed off at myself why are you eating this again? Or like, you're supposed to be on a diet and you keep going to this food, da, da 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 But really what was going on is my inner child that's still within me, that's still within you, that learned how to self-soothe, she couldn't help but go to candy. She couldn't help but do the behaviors that she once learned in childhood. She never learned how to emotionally release or speak her mind or um, get support or help or ask for help. So I would do those behaviors because that's all I knew. And once I understood why I was doing the behaviors that I was doing like emotionally self-soothing, let's say through candy or unhealthy food, I was able to then pick up a healthier behavior in the moments where I did feel the urge to wanna you know, eat candy or you know go back to a toxic ex or run away from my problems or just ignore everything because those were the behaviors that were really getting in the way of me taking care of myself like I should be everyone should be eating well and moving their bodies like there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing that although there is always a reason so I got to the root of my um, emotional side that I, I found that I was really driven to doing behaviors that I just knew weren't healthy for me but I it changed the way that I viewed it so in the moments where I did have the urge to eat candy let's say I would no longer shame myself or get pissed off at myself instead I would be very curious and understand like oh wait what just happened before I was triggered to eat the candy like and now there's so many things right that make us go into those behaviors but a lot of the times it was when I was feeling alone it was when I was feeling really overwhelmed with my mother's situation um financial things but also like if I just didn't get enough sleep or if I was drinking um or you know I just had an argument with somebody so really taking a deep look at what is causing you to do certain behaviors is going to be huge from a place of curiosity and love for yourself and then being able to see, hmm, what do I need in this moment instead of the unhealthy behavior like going back to an ex or just drinking and partying or running away from your shit or um, suppressing your emotions or going to food, right? What are other healthy behaviors? And you're not gonna know that until you sit with yourself and you do some journaling, which by the way, I have in this book. And like for me, you know, I, I learned how to express my emotions and, and let it out by journaling when I felt really overwhelmed or I felt sad about a situation or I felt like I was overthinking and I was really overwhelmed in my life or I was worrying about finances. Instead of just, you know, suppressing and running away and like, doing those behaviors that I just knew that weren't helpful for me, I would first go to my journal, emotionally release. I would go and ask a friend, can we talk? I saved up to go to therapy. I started talking out my feelings and even reading books on trauma and reading books on your emotions and just really like learning how to reparent myself, right? Because at the end of the day, like when I want to do a behavior that I know is not healthy for me, realistically what's going on is my inner child is trying to keep us safe. There's a part of me that's trying to like do something to keep us safe. I want to know why. I want to listen instead of just being like, oh my God, you shouldn't do that because that doesn't work and you will continue to 
self-sabotage, but also just getting curious as to what you actually need. Because a lot of us have specific needs and wants and things that we didn't get in childhood that we now need to learn how to give ourselves as adults. And I talk about this, like I said, in my book, I have a whole section of reparenting because that's really what it is. We have to learn how to reparent ourselves. We have to understand why we do the things that we do and we have to meet our needs in healthier ways instead of the ways that we have been doing. Now, I also had another part of me that tends to play a role in girlies or guys, but you guys are mainly girls who love to self-develop, okay? The girlies who are just like getting the books and the routines and the habits and the whatever, you probably are really independent. Maybe you had to be, at least that was my story. Like I had to just like get my shit done, which is great. But sometimes we tend to go into this all or nothing thinking, this perfectionist mindset of doing like 100% or nothing at all. So a lot of the times that I was falling off of these goals was mainly because it, was not realistic. So let's bring it back to the 75 hard challenge that I was saying. I'm not saying that you can't do it, okay? And there are people who have the capacity to be able to push themselves to do it, but realistically, to set out a goal to do two workouts a day, and one of them needs to be outside for me personally, especially also living in uh, Canada, for 75 days, it's not realistic. So it's no wonder that I'm gonna fall off of a freaking goal. But what I would do is I would set these unrealistic goals because I was so strict on myself and then I would beat myself to the freaking ground when I wouldn't do it. When realistically, the goal, it's not about you can't like have all these desires, but genuinely the goal is not um, created for a lifestyle that is unique to you. It doesn't take in consideration your lifestyle, your emotions, your cyclical, for me, I, I, I cycle sync. So there's just times where I don't have that much energy. Uh, I just wasn't being realistic. So I talk about that as well in this book, how, you know, sometimes the drive to want to do things all or nothing and be perfect is, um, rooted in the desire to really want an outcome because we're really attached to that outcome. And a lot of the times in this book, I talk about like dieting and fitness aspect of glowing up, how I really wanted to change my body and my looks because I didn't like myself and love myself. So I really wanted to do things all or nothing because I wanted to get to that goal really quickly because I didn't like myself. Okay, sorry, my camera died, so I kind of forget my train of thought, but essentially when I started working on getting to the root as to why I felt I needed to change myself so quickly, so rapidly, and like why I just like couldn't be okay and accept and love myself even through a process of glowing up, um, that changed the way that I did a lot of the habits that I knew were healthy for me. Like I stopped being so strict on myself when it came to workouts and you know, like burning myself out and, and um, strictly dieting and like being super clean and whatever and like all that kind of stuff because I learned how to love myself. I learned that, you know, even when I wanna change and glow up, it's gonna take some time and that's okay. Like there's no race. And at the end of the day, these things should be habits. These should be daily habits. I shouldn't be doing these things like moving my body and eating right and even self care and all these things from this place of like just getting an outcome and then I'm gonna stop. Like that's what I've been working on in the past few years since I've really healed my relationship with food and fitness and everything. And I can honestly say I am so consistent with movement and everything. And even the times where, yeah, maybe I've been kind of like in my flop era and like not really doing the things, I still keep a base level of movement and eating well. I just know that there's things that I can tone up and, and I don't mean tone up in my body, but I just mean like tone up in terms of my habits that I know that I can push myself on. And that's why we're doing this challenge. But I'm not coming from a place where I literally didn't do anything, which is fine if you are, by the way, but I used to do that. I would go through weeks of, you know, burning myself out and then I would be doing nothing and be in this depressive rut and binge eating and not moving my body and taking care of myself and hating myself for like three weeks at a time. And then I would start this like crazy challenge and like da da da, da and then I would start it for a little bit and then not and then fall down again. So understanding that root cause of why you are so attached to that outcome can be very huge. And again, I give you shadow work journal prompt guides in this book as well. I talk about that as well. And listen, when you start to get to the root of your self-sabotage and you learn how to emotionally self-soothe in healthier ways and you stop being such a tyrant on yourself you are, like I said, in this cycle of always kind of showing up for yourself. So realistically, you're always on this glow up journey. It's essentially always permanent. And that brings me to the next thing that life is really cyclical and growth is always gonna be required of you. And, you know, I think sometimes we, 
when we think about keeping like a permanent glow up, we just like want to like move linear through life. But realistically, there's always going to be seasons of your life that are going to require you to do new things, move your body in new ways. You might have health issues. You might have certain things come up. These are all a part of your journey. And I think sometimes when things happen in our lives, we look at it like we're going down, which doesn't mean that you're like, you, you don't have to ignore the fact that maybe like you're having a dip, right? Like I said, I, I kind of went through my flop era. I wasn't feeling the best. I was kind of depressed, whatever. But even as I was experiencing that, I, I felt, yeah, like I'm going down, but I know if I were to, um, zoom out and look at this chart of my life. Yes, I would have an up and I would have a down, but if you zoom out, I am always going up. Even if you're dropping down, you're still always going up. And bringing it back to growth will always be required. There are so many times in my life that I had those you know, those dips, right? I had an unhealthy relationship with food. I had chronic illness. I didn't love myself. I was financially stressed. All of those things actually contributed to something so much bigger, which is my YouTube channel, my podcast, my book, my freaking book that I literally wrote all of that in here. So how am I even gonna look at that? Like, oh, that wasn't meant to happen, right? And that's not to say that we wanna always invite really crappy things in our lives. But the truth is that is just, that's the journey of life, right? So let's stop looking at our, our uh, lows or our dips as something that's bad, right? We don't have to fall off all of the healthy habits. Um, when we are going through tough times, we need to maybe change the way that we're doing some things. That's why it's always good to have like a wellness menu for every area of your life. But also like you don't need to look at it like you're failing because when you look at it like you're failing or when you look at it like, let's say you ate that, that cookie because you emotionally like couldn't help yourself and you ate it, if you look at it like it's the end of the world, then what's gonna happen? You're gonna binge eat, okay? When I would binge eat, it was because I would be so strict on myself and I would have these crazy rules and then when I would eat one cookie, I said, oh my God, it's the end of the world and then I was like, oh my God, I'll just start on Monday. If I just ate the one cookie, that wouldn't have changed anything to do with my body or my fitness or my anything. But the way that I perceived the cookie, the way that I perceived that I was making a mistake was the reason why I continue to spiral down into this abyss, right? So when things happen in your life, when you aren't having the most perfect day, stop looking at it like it's the end of the world. Understand that there's most likely a reason why you're doing the thing that you're doing, okay? Or simply, it doesn't have to be that deep because sometimes it's not that deep. Okay, you just didn't have a great day, whatever. It is what it is you're on your period not a big deal go for a hot girl walk instead of go to the gym it's not gonna be the end of the world you're not gonna lose your progress whatever it's the way that you are perceiving your actions and that was technically my third tip which is stop looking at everything like your past um quote unquote mistakes or the things that you've done um like it's bad or like it's wrong or that you're going backwards in life because you are not the moment you look at yourself like you're going backwards the moment you look at yourself like you're failing or uh, even if it comes to like dating right like uh, you're going through a breakup or rejection happens or whatever nope the only thing that you should be thinking about of course you have to feel your feelings yes it's gonna suck you're allowed to feel that but at the end of the day you're just one step closer to finding your dream man to finding your dream relationship and and when it comes to health and fitness right yeah it's gonna be a trial and error okay maybe you you trying to do this like strict workout routine and, and you're not hitting it it doesn't mean that you're a failure it just means maybe you're just setting two unrealistic goals like maybe that's not the type of movement that you want to even be doing but you're telling yourself to do that because someone else on the internet is telling you to do that that's why i wanted to make this challenge very unique to you guys because you know yourself best. And even if you're on a pursuit of understanding yourself and you need advice and you need tips from other people, that's great. But what feels the best to you? What do you know you can do? You know yourself more than anyone else. So understand as you're going through this glow up journey and even after the challenge is done, you are always going to be working on yourself. You're always going to be able to improve. And even if you don't have the best day, it doesn't mean that you're not growing and you're not thriving. And some of those days are required are required for you to change. Stop looking at the bad days like they're wrong and they shouldn't be happening. Instead, feel your feelings, let it be what it needs to be, don't make it a big deal, and see the lessons and see the wisdom in those days. And I promise you, that's the information that's going to get you from A to B. The way that I actually glowed up and became the version of me that I always dreamed of was through all of the hardships that I went through in this book. But I thought when I was 16 years old, okay, 
the diet, movement, becoming the Tumblr girl with a small waist and wearing size double zero Hollister shorts and like all the attention on social media and like all the guys are gonna like me, like that's when I'm gonna know that I'm glowed up. No, that's not how it worked, okay? And again, this is not to mean that you need to have like this like super like tragic like life or whatever, but there's always lessons to be learned in everything in your life and just look at it like that. And I think about this when it comes to like law of assumption is assuming that everything is working out in your favor, even if at this moment it's not necessarily like the best even when it comes to getting sick right it's like okay my body's talking to me what does my body need right now does it need more sleep does it need more rest do i need to change the way that i've been doing my habits what do i need do i need to support myself when i get better do i need to sleep more do i need to drink more water do i need to have more boundaries with friends do i need to stop drinking so much there are things that our bodies and our lives are always saying to us we just need to listen instead of judging instead of saying nope this shouldn't be happening and then punishing ourselves for for it. There's no need for that. And that's what I talk about in my book, the secrets to a sustainable glow up. If you want to feel like you're always on a glow up, you have to change your mindset and you have to heal. Essentially, this is what it is. It's coming home to yourself. So with that said, book will be linked down below. It is currently sold out in Canada, but they are reprinting the book right now, which is crazy that you guys already sold it out. Um, but it's available on Amazon and anywhere you get your books, bookstores in store and online. All the links will be down below, but also depending on where you live, just type in my book name. You could also request it. Again, like if you live in Canada, they're reprinting, so it should be coming out very soon. The template in the habit tracker is for free. You can get it down below. And yeah, follow me on TikTok and all the socials. And let me know in the comments if you're gonna be starting this challenge with me and also what you want to see moving forward in order to help you with your journey of glowing up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.